Welcome to another episode of our Eagle Perspective podcast. I'm Mike Siciliano. We are going to be talking about social media today, and I am joined by two of our middle school's finest, our assistant principal, Christy Ellis, and our middle school world history teacher, as well as the person who leads our advisory program, Matt Robinson. Thank you both for being here. Thank you. Thank you for having us. It's, it's always fun <laughs> with the middle school, right? That's Absolutely. what I've learned in my time yeah. in the upper school. Yeah. It's like, it's fun down there. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Um, why don't you introduce yourself a little bit, uh, your connection with Santa Fe, b- before we get into our conversation and, and how long you've been here and what you do here. Okay. So I'm the assistant principal of the middle school, and I've been at Santa Fe for five-ish years. This is my third year. Got hired alongside the yeah, upper school finest. Yeah, at the same uh, <laughs> same time. And what else am I saying? I, I, I love the middle school. Okay. Mom of now, three. You said you said five years as an employee, but you've had kids here mm, like the same amount of time. Okay. Well, I thought your oldest went to the preschool here. Oh, so we did. Okay. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then uh, Cade was in public middle or in public lower for a long time, and then we brought him over in ninth grade, and then Ashley and Tyler came in seventh grade. Awesome. And then I started in this position. A few years ago. Okay, and you get yeah. to deal with all of the fun things that come up in the middle school world. I do, I do. It's awesome. the wild west and wonderful. It's all good. I love it. And Matt, how about yourself? Uh, this is my eighth year at Santa Fe. Taught seventh grade world history every year since so I've been hired. I've also taught a current events elective a couple of years, and I lead our advisory um, curriculum as well as I am our chapel host for the middle school as well, the chapel coordinator. That's so, right. And that's uh, – chapel is new this year. Uh, with the middle school, we've separated from the upper school, so which has been awesome. We've had some really great conversations that are relevant to our yeah. middle schoolers. Absolutely. And, and to be clear, not that mm-hmm. chapel is new for the middle school. No, but no, no, no. no. We've had chapel <laughs> having a middle school-specific school chapel school coordinator. Middle school-specific yeah. chapel has been really cool. Do you want to share a little bit about what advisory is in the middle school? Yeah. So advisory is this awesome time every morning that we have. with So our, our advisors meet with about like 15 um, students, either all boys or all girls, and they get to really just – that's where they start their day. So it's a great place that we maybe like have announcements for the week. But throughout the week, we actually get into much more deeper conversations about our faith, where we're at, what it's like in the middle school. We spend time in community. So like on Fridays, we oftentimes play a game or we have donuts or something like that outside and just to get to know one another and be in community with one another, which is really great. And the students, they get to know that there's a, uh, an advisor who knows who they are, get to advocate for them. Um, they have conversations with them. It's a great place uh, for parent touch points, especially with like what's going on socially with kids. If they have questions or have questions about Santa Fe. It's a great place to always start is with an advisor, yeah. um, someone who really knows the students and has a heartbeat for the for what's going on kind of amongst yeah. the students. This is a pretty. This is like a very topical topic. That's a terrible phrase. But this is yeah. this is like a, a topic that is on the minds of a lot of people, parents and mm-hmm. people in the world, social media. I mean, it has taken over in the last 15 years or so. Uh, I, like I remember personally, I was in college when Facebook became a thing and it came to our campus mm-hmm. and it was like, oh, there's this yeah. thing called Facebook. And mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure my, fir- my first thought was like, well, that's never going to make it. What's the point of that thing? <laughs> right, right. Uh, and, and now it's everywhere. Um, and certainly mm-hmm. it's everywhere with our students, mm-hmm. right? So there's a lot we can talk about, and we're eventually going to get to some things that we're doing on campus to address some of the concerns. But but maybe the maybe I should start with this question: Is social media bad? Wow, I think no. I think I mean with many things in life, it can be bad. I mean, absolutely, it could be used as a as a tool. It could also be used as a weapon. I yeah. think that's what we've seen. That's well said. Uh, I think every person who's ever engaged in social media has seen the pros and the cons yeah. right in, right at their fingertips, literally. And I think it came, it came so quickly that we, we weren't equipped mm. in how to deal with it. And we did not equip our kids in mm-hmm. how to deal with it. Um, nor did we know the ramifications or where it would travel. And so now we, we have that data. Um, finally, even the social media companies are admitting some mm, of that yeah. data. Yeah. And so now we can see the, the toxicity of it. So while it can be mm-hmm. um, really helpful, which is part of our conversation today, yeah. um, currently it's uh, not looking like it's as helpful as it is mm-hmm. destructive to the hearts and minds. But of I think kids. it is important for us to be clear on on sort of our position on this. Sure. It's, it's not mm-hmm. that, you know, nobody should ever have social, right. social media. Right. Like mm-hmm. that's not where we're right. coming from as mm-hmm. far as how we're approaching it. Right. Mm-hmm. with kids, right? right? 
um, probably for a couple of reasons. I mean, mm-hmm. one, it's totally unrealistic. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but two, we, we have seen, like, there are benefits mm-hmm. of it. There is a, sure. a connectedness of it. But there have clearly been some pitfalls, right? Yeah. So, so yeah. maybe you guys can talk a little bit about what are some of those pitfalls that we're seeing on campus? It's funny. I, 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 I would like to first say how important and incredible it was during, um, during COVID, actually. So I'll start with the mm-hmm. positive mm-hmm. that, you know, there were many aspects of social media that I think saved our kids mm. um, and gave them an opportunity to... to um, connect with friends and teachers and all of these things. So, so there is so much good possibility in it. Yeah. Um, the things that happen in, on campus, and I'm sure you see these, you know, come across your desk too, Mike. Is, no, the upper schoolers are pretty yeah. perfect. Yeah. <laughs> Nothing ever goes so, wrong there. So. so it's just a middle school problem. <laughs> yeah, we're just, I'm, I'm just here to help you guys, yeah. really. So, <laughs> Thank you. That's so benevolent. Uh, so... <laughs> I think that our students, while they don't know how to wield it, right? Mm-hmm. And just like adults, actually, there mm-hmm. is um, mm-hmm. like a disembodiment, I think is like the technical term where kids do and say things online that they would not do and say in person, even to their mm-hmm. friends, not let alone their parents. So, um, you know, as kids are in uh, heavy identity formation mm-hmm. in middle and upper school and, you know, even in early stages of college, they're spending so much time on these platforms and it's, it is influencing their identity, right? And so when things are not going well or they're being left out of things or things are being said to them um, publicly or through a chat, uh, it ends up in our offices because people are hurt by it. Mm-hmm. And the casualties are, are not rare. They're common. And so that's kind of how it shows up in yeah. my office. How about you, Matt? Yeah. And I mean, I think even as some people listen to this, they're going to be like, well, my kid doesn't have social media. Right. But that doesn't mean they're not being influenced by social <laughs> media. And I think a lot of parents yeah. can understand that piece about like, oh, wait a second, but my kids still text friends. They're in group chats. They're, they're at a they're, friend's they're house. They're at a friend's or... house. They're talking about something. They're reading a comment somewhere. They're watching YouTube videos. Yeah. And they're getting, a- there's advertising, you know, there's, right. there's so many elements. And I heard it once in a, in a podcast described as our digital nervous system mm-hmm. yeah. that we now have this nervous mm-hmm. system in our pockets. Yeah. That essentially we hear about something that's going on on the whole other side of the world and we instantly feel it. Yeah. So even with right. new, like right. even just events and it's and the with, general yeah. connectedness. Mm-hmm. Yes. Right. Even yeah. if it's not a, you know, Facebook, Instagram, mm-hmm. whatever social yeah. media app, it's that general mm-hmm. connectedness. Yeah. And I think that's where I go back to like, there's so many amazing opportunities. I think about many of the designers would like, they're incredible. Mm-hmm. The people that created these things are yeah. absolutely incredible yeah. individuals yeah. with amazing minds. And probably had some great places where their hearts were. But then quickly, it's amazing how we as humans can create something and then we could, we, it could go awry. Yeah, and we sure. know that. I mean, as Christians, Unintended we totally consequences, see this. Unintended consequences, unforeseen yeah. uses, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. And a lot of times it's those random scenarios that come up out of nowhere that you're like, okay, how do I respond to this now? Yeah. And I think that's one of the big things that we're looking at in the middle school yeah. is like, how do we prepare students when the scenario happens? Because mm-hmm. yeah. they're not, they're not really going to be able to control everything that comes their way. Right. But really looking at like how do they posture themselves and how do they respond to the situations mm-hmm. they're in in scenarios. So yeah. part of really what we what we'd like to do is give to, give students tools and like a like a philosophy mm-hmm. around mm-hmm. Yeah. this space, right? Around how do I behave in the digital world in ways that are going to be productive and good for me yeah. and good for those around me right. and and not negative. Because if we don't mm-hmm. do that, they just sort of wander into yeah. it and and don't, you know, unintentionally sometimes find themselves in these situations that are unhealthy. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. What are some of the 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 effects of that connectedness on kids? Like specific effects of like you know, kids are ultra connected. I mean, you mentioned like the, just the constant in your pocket mm-hmm. buzz, like what does that do to them? I think there is a, um, you know, I don't know if this is going to be articulated properly, but it's there, okay. It's middle school. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> They're going, they are thinking about it all the time. Yeah. This, this digital life that they have is, uh, I mean, I haven't done the research on this, but from what I see, it has more of an effect on their everyday than than we can really imagine. I think it's a safe assumption. Yes. Yeah. Um, is, so is that what you asked? It more about the impact on them? Like they're thinking about it all yeah. the time. Yeah. Even I mean, when they're not interacting with it. Um, yeah, I don't know yeah. if I asked answered the whole question well, there. Well, to go but... off what you're saying there, I think – so 
one of the things we'll be discussing later is this program called Social Institute, but yeah. they, with their data, they've kind of come to find that like 60% sixth graders nationwide yeah. have a phone. Mm-hmm. You know, once they get to eighth grade, it jumps up to like 90%. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So just mm-hmm. the fact that they have something like that in their pockets, and, and we know it too. I mean, instantly it's like your hand just almost starts to reach into your pocket to mm-hmm. grab your phone. Or, I mean, I've seen it with students in class where, okay, device is closed. We're just going to chat for a second. And like within a couple minutes, it's just like, boop, and they just opened it. It's not yeah. done in, 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 a, in a way that's like. It's become an yeah. extension of the body. Exactly. Yeah. It's right. just like, boom, it's just, it's vying for my yeah. attention. And mm-hmm. So I think, you know, I think that idea of like seeing it as a tool and as a way, like everything that we, we obtain, we're like, okay, what is this for? What's the goal for this for me? Like, what am I, what am I getting this thing for? Um, and, and especially like with our phones or it's a, a child's iPad. It's like, what's the goal of this? And I think mm-hmm. getting them to understand it's like, okay, there's entertainment on here. There's also a way for me to connect with others. Like we talked about, there's a way for me to use this in my academics and that can be kind of tough for these students yeah. to kind of figure out where where are the lines with this when i'm working on an assignment but then a text message comes in yeah mm-hmm. you know what i mean compared to you know when we were using paper and that's pencil, hard for me it's not exactly Absolutely. like yeah, yeah. like if, like is this confession time where it's yeah. like oh 100 percent. i'm, I'm like answering an email but then a text comes right. in oh yeah so i switch over and start responding to that right. but then i get yep. some other notification i'm like on this rabbit trail right. of yep. unfinished things right, and, right. and 100 percent i'm the yeah. same and you're 100%. you're fully formed. Well, most days, my some, some people would disagree. <laughs> but <laughs> but, but yeah. imagine yeah. like having an adolescent brain, which is mm, just yeah. in process, right? And yeah. still having this variety of distraction all yeah. the time. It's pretty tough. I, I think about the social implications too, and this yeah. is a question I get mm-hmm. a lot. But yeah. like, I you know, when I was in high school, you know, everything had to be. Uh, planned intentionally. The social events a little bit more. Mm-hmm. If you wanted to get mm-hmm. a group together. You yeah. had to make seven okay. different phone calls, yep. right? right? In you the time. talk to mom totally. first. Like Where? you know, <laughs> if it, and e- even more so if if my friends all got together without me, I might not know about it. Right? Mm. Usually you right? didn't. Yeah. Yeah. And now it's like all of that happens in an yeah. instant. Yeah. You know, in an instant, what everybody's doing, right? It, like the there's kids pictures, have the, there's photos, the snap here. map where you can it? literally right. open up the map and see where all of your right. friends yeah. are, right? right. Like, yeah. um, like I'm so, I'm selfishly, I'm kind of glad. Like I would, I, I'm the king of FOMO as it is. Yes. Mm. I would have been <laughs> yeah. like, why are all those people there? Why wasn't I invited? Right. How come I didn't know? Oh, they must right. hate me, right? right. I mean, yep. that's, that's kind of right. what you goes on. And there's, right. there's a false narrative that forms in your head almost, or a narrative that's not complete and i think you touched about the speed in which this is all occurring in just the speed in the technology you know something's new and then we're trying to learn about it yeah we don't know the implications of it the speed in which things are being um communicated yeah um Mm -hmm. and i think that's one of the things that is Mm -hmm. is amazing and also incredibly tough like we talked about during covid this opportunity for kids to be able to connect and still have these opportunities um an amazing place to share what's going on. I mean, to hear about a student who's like, you know, it's their birthday and they're just getting flooded with all these happy birthdays. Yeah. And I hope you have a great day and these like right. fun ga- Like there's some like stuff like that where it's like, especially a student who's like sick yep. or something at home and they feel alone. They feel like, man, I'm not going to be at school for a couple of days. Mm-hmm. And just to see like, hey, they're still connected. Like there's some mm-hmm. amazing pieces there, but that connectedness also kind of have a dark side to mm-hmm. it too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. A picture being shared, a, mm-hmm. a situation where they feel left out, like mm-hmm. you're saying, and just kind of running through those things in a way that we, I felt like it was a little slower. And I yeah. think for them, it's very, very fast. Yeah. yeah. And, and we could be present. We could, yeah. you know, if you're, our kids have the hardest time and we do too as adults being able to be where we are yeah. because there's something always slicing through if we allow it to, yeah. right? Yeah. So trying to teach and learn how for ourselves as adults as well, we're just mm. as bad at it. Let's just be yeah. honest. I mean, it's, yeah. um, to silence our phone or, or to figure out where the balance is for us. Is it mm. being with your family? Is it so that you can truly experience and make memories where you are yeah. rather than constantly having a double life. Are you saying it's unhealthy for me to wake up, roll over and immediately check my email? Good morning phone. (laughs) (laughs) Like that's not a good thing. Full Uh, truth. Uh, Yeah. So yeah. The the other thing I see a lot of, and I'm curious if you see this in the middle school too, is Mm -hmm. the the amount of conflict resolution that is attempted through digital means and just is an epic failure. Like I'm just like, Agreed. you know, don't, don't break up with somebody. I was about to on, say, I was like, on text, we got to like, break up. Right. Like that's it's just, me, that is the you. worst <laughs> thing. Ever, right? um, and then, and then uh, even yes. like having, having arguments mm. and yeah. trying to like text 
back and forth, like right. miscommunications. Like, like yeah. when we had an argument at school with a friend, we had to like go home and like think about it and wallow right. in it. And then we wouldn't talk until the next day. And by mm. then it's like, We'd process Softer. quite a bit. Yeah. Now it's like this five minute mm-hmm. increments of like, um, what should I do next? Yeah, I'll send right. this. Mm-hmm. Right. right. And then another input five minutes later and then another decision of what am I going to do, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. which is just as different. Yeah. It know? is different. And I think there's some uh, courageousness now to do things verbally, right? Mm-hmm. That yeah. we that, But it's learned courageousness because it is so easy to take the passive route, yeah. which is why you see even adults on, in comments, um, and especially if it's anonymous, you know, I mean, that it could be just a sewage online yeah. of what people are willing to say without sure. processing yeah. or Absolutely. having to like see someone's eyes or hear their tone. Yeah. I keep mm-hmm. saying to my kids, no tone can be captured on, yeah. even on text. Oh, yeah. I mean, the emojis <laughs> maybe help, <laughs> maybe. but sometimes yeah. they're passive aggressive. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. Say something, then you put an emoji. Yeah. Anyways, it's a it's a whole new land, which is why we're mm-hmm. trying to help equip our kids uh, to be self honoring, family honoring, God honoring through their life online as well as in person yeah. because it is now one right. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. all a piece of who we are. We're not just one slice. And I was thinking about this this morning. I mean, how often do we just look online to see who someone is, you know, and you get your Mm. first images and you've already made an assumption about someone without Mm. having any life context other than what's been curated. Mm -hmm. And even what's been curated is probably curated toward a certain audience or or need, Mm -hmm. you know, and so it's also very inaccurate. Yeah. And so trying to help our ourselves and our kids um, present and balance an accurate view of themselves and to honor the Lord in all spaces and honor their mm. family in all spaces is, um, it's a lofty goal cause we're all working on it, but better late than never. Yeah. yeah. And so that's why we're trying to, to help and address it, mm-hmm. but not, not with the long finger of like right. shame uh, of, Oh, social well, media is the worst. Yeah. It's, and it just yeah. needs to be done. And that there, differently. and there are some hard realities in that. Like, like, um, yeah. you probably get this. I, I get this question in the upper school. If I, don't let my child have social media. Mm. Will they be excluded? Mm. Mm. And you know, yeah. it's hard for me because th- right. yes, yeah, you that know, is the I case. mean, they will. That that mm. is a mode of organizing things, of having conversations. Mm. That um, you know, that's a tough call yeah. for parents to make, right? Yeah. Of like, mm. I don't want my kids exposed and dealing with all this stuff, so I'm going to take social media away. But the flip side of that is, you know, they may be excluded from some things. Right. And maybe that is a cost that is worth having. And, you know, parents will make sure. their own choices on that. Mm. Um, I think where we're coming from is acknowledging that, like, look, for, for a lot of people, at least at some point in life, this is going to be a part of life. Right. Mm-hmm. How do we do it in a way that is positive? Right. Mm-hmm. Right. right. And, um, and you mentioned Social Institute. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and maybe we transition and talk about that a mm-hmm. little bit. It's a partner right. that, that we've, we've had for about a year now. We're kind of just starting to lean into a little bit. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, do you want to share a little bit about Social Institute and, yeah. and, uh, and, sure and maybe even how you're going to use it in the middle school as well? Yeah, so Social Institute um, is a program led by Laura Tierney. Tierney mm-hmm. And she um, has worked with social media through various organizations as well as some schools like Duke. Um, she played collegiate um, basketball, I believe, or, and essentially she has kind of witnessed the goods and the bads of social media and in her Mm -hmm. research and with her team. And they decided to kind of come up with this program called social Institute to really help students kind of understand, like, how do I use this as something to build people up in a positive manner? Mm -hmm. Not just talking about the negatives, not scaring them, not using just fear all the time, but really trying Mm -hmm. to be authentic and real with them and seeing how do you use this in a positive light? And I think for us in our DNA being a, being Santa Fe Christian, I mean, we want to be that positive, but we also want it to be Christ-like. Mm-hmm. You know, this idea of like, what if a bunch of first century Christians had cell phones? Like, how would they have <laughs> used social media? How would they have used, what, what would have been like for them in the digital world? And that's kind of what we're looking at now today, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Um, so there's seven different standards that they use. And they and it's amazing because they what they do in the, how we're going to use it in advisories um, is it's kind of got a gamification to it. So it will throw up a, uh, like a, a scenario, something that would have happened, maybe, maybe something they read or something that was passed around or something they heard from another student, something having to do with media, technology. And the students will have four different kind of responses they could pick from. And individually, they'll do it on a device. So it's kind of just between them and 
it's anonymous in a way. So they'll pick however they would respond to it. And then after the time limit has, it's got like 30 seconds mm-hmm. to answer it. Um, it will show the results. You know, most of, you know, 60% of the class picked A or B or C, depending on how to respond to the situation. And, um, and then it will show across the school, like what did the rest of the seventh graders say? What's the, what's the percentage? And then it goes nationally. So the students can kind of see like, oh, wow. So a lot of us are kind of in this boat or, oh, I'm actually a little bit more different in how I'd respond hmm. to that. And it, it, it frames for a conversation to happen. And that's where, it, this is where the advisor is pivotal is mm-hmm. they, they know these students. They have a little bit of a background of what's going on in their lives, right? They have a Christ-like perspective that they're able mm-hmm. to be like, okay, how do we respond to this? Like, where are we at in this situation as a school, as a community, as a Christian? And, um, that's essentially how we're going to use it in the classroom. And what's great is in the program, it also has student voices, yeah. students from high school, students from middle school, college that have kind of dealt with some of these situations, Olympic athletes that kind of share their perspective on it too, that they've recorded and chosen to share it with this program. And it usually does about three scenarios per um, uh, lesson. And some of, some of these standards include like finding your influencers. Mm-hmm. Uh, like who are the people influencing you? What are the programs actually influencing you? Who are you... Who are you constantly listening to yeah. or watching? Um, cyberback, like how do you actually stand up for a friend? Rather than watching out for cyberbullying, like how do you actually make sure you're like, wait a second, my friends are being like harassed. Right. How do I, what, what, is, what is the steps to take mm-hmm. in order to stand up to them, stand up in a healthy way, in right. a way that's going to protect them and your right. friends? Right. Um, striking a balance. All right, in their life and management of this and protecting their privacy. Like, how do they actually protect their privacy at this age? And, yeah. and really, the core one is playing to the core is what it's called. And really, that goes back to that identity, that mm-hmm. middle school and high school, there's so much identity mm-hmm. formation happening. And it's like, who am I? That this is an extension of who I am now. This digital world, we're in it now. This is where we're at. And to think that like, oh, my life and who I am as a person stops right when I pick up a phone right. is a lie. It's a lie. Right. Literally, the enemy would love for you to... to, to right. So to, to, listen to, to build on that one, because I, I use this a little bit with a freshman this year, mm-hmm. um, and I, I did a lesson out of Play to Your Core, mm-hmm. which gets at this idea of does your online presence, like if someone mm-hmm. who doesn't know you mm-hmm. looks at everything you do mm-hmm. online, what will that say about you? Yeah. Absolutely. Does that match your yeah. stated values? Yeah. And um, the, the scenario in the one I use with them is it asks a question about, it's sort of like a did you know that mm-hmm. more than two-thirds of colleges or uh, employers yeah. will look through your social media before making a decision on you. Mm-hmm. Do you think that's fair? And, you know, kids will, kids will answer, mm-hmm. but at the one. end it's I sort like of like, yeah. it doesn't really, really matter, matter. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> if you think it's fair or not, it will it happen. Yeah. yeah. And so it gets them into this conversation about, you know, how does that change or, or make you think when you're mm-hmm. about to post something, you know, mm-hmm. you want to make fun of your buddy, yeah. you know, sure. Maybe, maybe your buddy really is fine with it. Right. Mm-hmm. And maybe you have that kind of relationship. But what kind of picture does it paint about yourself? Mm-hmm. Right. And the things you represent. If someone sees that in three years, right. yeah. and you know, what out kind of, of conclusion are they gonna draw about yeah. you? Right. <clears throat> yeah. Right. Yeah. And I and I like that you mentioned that you are using it with the ninth grade because it is grade specific. That's yeah. that's they definitely so have good. worked with educators, they've worked with families, they've worked with students to understand that like hey, what a sixth grader is going through is different from a ninth grader. Right. And that's what I really right. love about it. So it is um, differentiated. Uh, per uh, grade level and age level, so right. it is appropriate to like, hey, this is what you're. This is this is relevant to where the yeah. sixth graders are at, and right. and to go off, it's 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 not just social media, right? It's going back to like those text messages, right. you know, it's yeah. going back to those those places where the things are being shared, and even in like a Google Doc. Like, mm-hmm, you know, mm-hmm. you think that those are like, oh, but those are used, you know, in the classroom for writing yeah. a paper. It's like there's also <laughs> chat functions and sharing Comments. and, you know, it's, yeah. those are all places. Those are all fair game in the, in the technical mm-hmm. world of where our identity can be displayed. Yeah. yeah. And I love that the program spends so much time asking kids how it's working before, yeah. you know, they mm-hmm. send it out. So because I, you know, our kids hear so much of the no's, like we talked mm-hmm. about, and, and this is engaging to them. It's fun for them, and it's friendly. So it gets them thinking without feeling like just one more rule from, mm-hmm. you know, the old folks who yeah. are the worst. You know, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I love that the the mm-hmm. social institute does use kids for, yeah. you know, yeah. to make sure that this is all ready to go in the classroom. Right? They yeah. have the biggest yeah. voice in yeah. it, which is really healthy. And oh. I was just going to say, and we did try it out a little bit at the mm-hmm. end of last year, just kind of practice it, practice the program. And I remember at the end of the year, um, one of our reps with Social Institute kind of told us like, okay, but we're going to send you guys uh, new lessons in August. And I was like, 
what was wrong with the last <laughs> right. day? And what I loved about the response is, hey, we're always learning. Things are changing. Yeah. Things are changing. And I think yeah. that's exactly what you were talking mm-hmm. about. Shout about out him. to Josh. Yeah, Josh. Josh. Absolutely. So Josh has been patient with us. He's le- I mean, like really he, patient. he's an awesome individual. And I think uh, that is a great heart because I yeah. think that's exactly where we're at too is we're always learning. Yeah. We're always growing. And I think that's exactly their perspective, too, as an organization. And I, I, yeah. I yeah. respect that. And and we should be clear about the Social Institute. They are not mm-hmm. a um, a Christian organization yep. in the sense of they're only working with mm-hmm. Christian schools, although they are working with a lot of Actually, Christian quite schools. A few, yeah. right. And having looked through a bunch of the lessons, would you say mm-hmm. it's, it's accurate that, that the principles and the standards are, are consistent oh, with, with biblical principles as yeah. far as what kids are going to walk away with? 100%. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. And I think that's a great place for like our advisors to step into Absolutely. that we can add yep. to the conversation and right. kind of grow it. I mean, there's several uh, Christian schools across the country who have chosen to use this program because it's a framework. And yeah. I think right. that's what I really love of what Josh says is like, hey, this is something to start with. Mm-hmm. And then you make it specific and you grow it to the, your school and the DNA in your school, like I mentioned earlier. Right. So I think it's a beautiful thing. It's great. It is. And I, I think for our kids, where, where do they have the most influence in their lives right now? And it's... Mm. On their on phones, but, yeah. I mean, not yeah. the phone, but all the social yeah. media platforms, yeah. and so yeah. equipping yeah. them, and our teachers are excited about that. Yeah. So and having the po- trying to get more of that positive mindset, that was something that yeah. they had mentioned themselves about, like how they started, and I think a lot of the kids kind of felt like, oh, it's another one, like uh, you were saying, yeah. yeah, and they were like, okay, yeah, like how do we, how do we do this balance? Like how do we yeah. talk about the dangers of it, but also like, hey, how do we change this? Yeah. How can we? begin changing the perspective of how this is used. It gives right. them ownership yeah. of it. It's right. not It's not a bunch of adults being like, hey, right. this is bad. No. You yeah. shouldn't right. do this. Absolutely. Right. I uh, love that driver's ownership license. piece. It's a great yeah. way. <laughs> one, one other piece of this that I think is, is really important is there's a parent component mm. to yes. this, which I know we're going to be kind of rolling out here soon. Mm-hmm. It's called the Parent Toolkit. Yes. Uh, yeah. You guys want to talk about that a little bit on, on what that is? Sure. So uh, for as much as we can do in advisory Mm -hmm. and, you know, systematically at Santa Fe, obviously our partnership with parents is the most important piece. And as a parent myself, I, I'm often curious, what's this new app? I, you know, Mm -hmm. a few years ago before TikTok, it was like, what's TikTok? And I thought it was only about the dancing out in front of our mm. classrooms that we would see all over campus. Seemed pretty... Ms. Robinson, can you be in this TikTok? Yeah. <laughs> no, go. I don't know. Where does it go? Are you in one? Who sees it and what's going to happen What's going to happen? Get yeah, out. Close exactly. the door. They're like, who cares? Just be in it. <laughs> right. So again, like it seemed like no big deal. And there are so many aspects of TikTok that are no yeah. big deal. That being said, there there are uh, landmines in there. And mm. Mike and I have waded through some pretty, you know, Man. deep oh, dives yeah. into TikTok can be really disheartening Mm -hmm. to say the least. So I think, so all that to say, the parent toolkit is, so for me, if I'm like, oh, there's this new app coming Mm -hmm. out. Yik yak. That's actually one already, right? Oh, okay, one. so yeah, I don't know that much about it. So <laughs> just made up a word. I did. Made up exactly. like, this one. Just make up a bunch of words and create our own app company. I think you created one. Oh, darn. Uh, anyway, I can go to this parent toolkit. Um, uh, you know, ironically, it's online. But I go online and I read about it and I can see, uh, you know, sort of the backdrop of it, what it's all about, pitfalls, pros and cons, ways mm. to, you know, ways to shepherd it in my own home. Mm. Um, it catches me up to the degree that I can be caught up, not being a student with what is what it's all about and hopefully gives me language to talk with my Mm -hmm. own kids about it and to decide ultimately if that's something that I would approve um, for the device Mm -hmm. so uh, we're excited about that aspect of the parent toolkit really hope that parents take advantage of it read about it and um, and really use it yeah yeah in their homes yeah. And there's also an opportunity for them to even ask questions, I believe, mm-hmm. at the bottom or ask about an app or bring up an yeah. app. Because, I mean, right. like we said, things are happening so quickly. So yeah. it's very and much like, hey, that, yeah. just and, heard and about this. And they're really good about like an yeah. app comes out and, and like several it. weeks later, there's a new a new topic in the parent yeah. toolkit of like, here's the app. Here's what we've seen so far. Here's what we're not sure yep. about. Here's what we're concerned about. Right. We'd recommend this. You enable this setting or mm-hmm. disable this exactly. feature. Exactly. So yeah. helpful. Um, and, you know, it, it just hopefully can become an easy stop mm-hmm. to learn yeah. about some of these things that mm-hmm. you're hearing. And, and you know, parents get surprised. And, yeah. and um, yeah. we you sure know, do. I, like one specific one I'll, I'll say, and we've, we've said this amongst our community, but, you know, Snapchat, very mm-hmm. popular right now. Right. A lot of parents don't realize that you can 
you can do financial transactions on Snapchat. You can mm, buy right. drugs from people on Snapchat, right? right. You know, those are right. those are dangers that not saying everyone who's on Snapchat is doing that, no. but Correct, yeah. that you want to be aware of as a parent and maybe disable mm-hmm. that feature, right? Right. Um, yeah. And and so those are hopefully this is a way to educate right. parents on those right. things. Right. Yeah. Right. Absolutely. Give our parents an opportunity to, I, I really think too, just part, like partnering with the kids, that getting the kids, I mean, they're not going to understand everything, of course, right? We're yeah. still mm-hmm. with setting the guidelines because we're the parents. Mm-hmm. Yeah, kids were the parents. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, but I think it's so important. Like when our kids are little, if they are getting punched in the sandbox, like we're not going to just leave them in the sandbox. We're, we're going to take mm-hmm. them out and talk to them about how to deal with these things when they're little and mm-hmm. You know, that now we have a digital sandbox and it can be brutal in mm-hmm. there. It can be fine. It can be, you mm-hmm. know, just keep the metaphor going, building all the things and having a wonderful time. It mm-hmm. can also be destructive and dangerous. And so yeah. it's our job to be aware of what's going on in, in their, their sandbox and yeah. to equip ourselves the best we can. And for them to know that that's, that's what we're doing. That's part of the conversation. And, yeah. then and I think it there. does take a partnership, I mean, between... Yeah. Uh, the school and parents and I think especially with the social institute program like students are yes. going to be engaging with it kind of uh, every other week in our advisory so you know when a student comes home and is talking about it talk to your kids about it mm-hmm. oh my gosh what a great opportunity yeah. or when they come home oh we're doing we're learning about social media you know and you know, they just have this already like uh, or how about you know what'd you do at school today nothing nothing <laughs> yeah oh yeah so I think those opportunities if they come up man jump on them as a parent you know mm-hmm. and I think I man I think I'm preaching to the choir um there uh, I just think this is a good opportunity to kind of open up some of those conversations and with with the advisors you know right. talk to the advi- the advisors are going to be leading and being a part of these conversations and um it's a great mm-hmm. opportunity yeah great opportunity I think and all that said, I think it's also important that we say we recognize that, you know, this is not the answer to all of no. our social Correct. media oh, no way. Cure, no. You know, problems. Right. It's, it's not the cure-all. It's a tool. Yeah. It's and, one tool. You know, we're going to try it. But, yeah. um, you know, ultimately our parents have the most mm-hmm. influence over Always. their kids. And, For sure. and, you know, ultimately there may be other things that we add and adjust to. Um, right. You mm-hmm. know, this is something we're excited about moving right. forward with right now. But yeah. this is an ever-evolving landscape. Ever-evolving. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, just yeah, get absolutely. to start planting some seeds. Yeah, yeah. seeing what goes. Well, good. Um, yeah. I can't say thank you enough to both of you for being here. You could text that uh, later. Well, I was yeah, going to say, yeah, I look forward to it. I hope you post. In- Instagram is and... my preferred oh, method of communication. Okay. Are you okay. are you more of a Snapchat person? You know, <laughs> or... yeah, I took a I took a hiatus from in- from Instagram for a year. I just came wow. out for a year. I'm I know. currently on a hiatus. I know. I took one year, but it's okay. Yeah, I am, I haven't I am been still all in. Let me tell you. <laughs> I, I mean, I, my phone's buzzed like four times since we've been sitting here. There you go. Sure, someone like my post, right? You're like, yeah, I got it. I got it. Look at all Well, we are very lucky to have the two of you in the middle school and Thank leading us. our efforts on this down there and can't say thank you enough for your impact on our kids and, and our community and for joining us on the podcast well thank you awesome. mike well, hey thank you Likewise, so much for your time. in the upper school it, thank it, you. it is my pleasure we'll do this again sometime soon okay uh thank you so much again for joining us on another episode of our eagle perspective podcast if this is your first time listening or watching us you can always catch us on apple music or spotify you can watch video podcasts on youtube uh, or you can find us on other places where podcasts are available We look forward to seeing you again soon.